What you're hearing is the sound of video editing on my computer. Fantastic. Alright, we are back at the Yamaha and I've got my hands on my new transistors. They are 2SC4793s and 2SA1837s. So, Trevor Madichoff uh, film editing and a generous sprinkling of fairy dust. Let's get them installed. Poof! New transistors installed. Cords in the wall, so let's see if see what it does. Drawing normal power, but whack DC offset still there. Yet again, almost seems to be a bit worse than before. Oh well. It's still within spec, so I'm not gonna complain. Now the, now the VIT power is on and the new transistors are installed. I'm going to give my new stereo coupling box for the distortion analyzer a bit of a premiere. My old connection cable since uh, the meter only takes one channel at a time so I was moving the leads back and forth over time and the cable was pretty much done for but hopefully this thing complete with sharp needle probes will do that for me let's hook it up alright the big moment has arrived I've hooked it up to my distortion meter and uh, just did a preliminary test just a quick test and it looked very promising so we are set to 1 kilohertz and let's measure the input voltage for 200 watts we want let's see about exactly 40 volts I remember above 180 before the repairs, the new transistors, it would uh, start distorting quite a lot. So let's go right up to 40 volts. There we are, exactly at 40. And look at that. The distortion scale is 0.01% full scale. So we are pushing 200 watts. On, on one channel though, but 200 watts at 0.003% THD plus N that is considerably better than before I think I have found the problem with this amplifier now that's quite obvious, so let's see how high we can go before we run into issues I'm turning the I'm turning the power up every time I uh, turn the power up a little, the uh, the notch filter in the distortion analyzer has to recenter and reset so it's going to register a lot more distortion while I'm turning the volume up but this seems to be right at the edge of clipping and we are pushing 46 volts and 46 volts into 8 ohms is about 265 watts Turned it off now, and for an amplifier that's rated for 240 watts per channel into 8 ohms at below 0.01% distortion, I think 265 watts into 8 ohms at 0.005% or so distortion is rather respectable. I am very happy with this. You know, we might just make a quick test. I can smell my loads burning down here. I don't have a fan on. It's very, very, ouch, very, very hot. 
I'm not going to do a two channel oh yes I am going to do a two channel test just for kicks because truth is load it deserves to burn so let's turn the power up I'll switch to the repaired channel we'll measure that there we go 40 volts and counting the amplifier is making a rather loud humming noise I hope you can hear it the transformer is working quite hard there we go we're right at the limit and we have 43 volts and 43 volts is yeah pretty much 240 watts per channel 43.8 so as usual the Japanese amplifier performs exactly as the Japanese amplifier specified I do love the smell of hot resistor I wish you could smell this this thing is too hot to touch ouch quite a bit too hot to touch yeah <laughs> I mean the amplifier it's cool to the touch really this channel is slightly warm alright I've got my camera set up on a tripod because I thought I'd do a 4 ohm uh, power test before I put this thing back together just to see that it doesn't blow up on me and uh, I've got uh, my two 8 ohm loads hooked up in parallel and hooked up to the output of the amplifier <coughs> <coughs> I've caught a bit of a cold sorry and uh, yeah let's just crank it up and see what happens hopefully it will not blow up I have no idea how much power this thing is going to be able to push into 4 ohms I guess we'll find out since we're looking at 4 ohms uh, the meters on the front of the amplifier are going to say pretty much or well, they are going to say exactly twice as much as uh, the amplifier is putting out we're now at a hundred watts two hundred watts we are not clipping yet let's see how far we can go I am afraid of this thing blowing up in my face. What does the meter say? About 200 watts. We are at 38 volts or so. No? There we are, right on the verge of clipping there. We are at 41.5 volts into 4 ohms and 41 and a half volts into 4 ohms is quite a lot of power let's see here yeah, you, you can't see anything it's over 400 watts <laughs> over 400 watts into 4 ohms there's my load fan cooled now with one channel driven that's pretty much the same voltage swing, swing as with 8 ohms so yeah that's a rather impressive load scaling on this thing I think the overload protection set to 600 watts into 4 ohms I think 
but we were clearly voltage limited there because the voltage swing to eight ohms is yeah right about 42 43 volts yeah I was I am pleasantly surprised really pleasantly surprised by that right I'm now running a sort of burning test pushing uh, it's the amplifier's rated power for an extended period of period of time. It's been running for about 20 minutes now, and uh, I noticed a rather odd artifact because I turned it up right to clipping, and uh, it performed well for a while. But then I noticed that uh, the distortion would uh, all of a sudden just uh, rise up a bit, like. Uh, yeah, pretty much we're the point of three percent scale, pretty much two thirds of the scale. It, it would just go up and I'd see a lot of clipping on the uh, scope. And I wonder what on earth was going on. And uh, then I took and set my grid meter to voltage. And right now it's at 229 volts, which is fine but it would sometimes drop down to like 223 so I kept an eye on it and sure enough the amplifier is running so close to its limit that when the grid drops by just like 7 volts or so the it would start clipping because the transformer can't give the voltage up we're at 227 volts now and you can see there's a fair amount of distortion just appearing out of nowhere. 226. Two twenty-five. And there we went up back to two twenty-nine. And the distortion's gone. <laughs> There we go. Start of this test at 15.20. It's been running for one hour, pushing its rated power. Oh, thank goodness. That fan is rather bothersome. One hour, continuous rated sine wave, one kilohertz, and it has not blown up. It went a bit odd though because the meter sort of flipped out in the middle. The right one started to think it was pushing like 280 watts while it was properly calibrated before and thought it was pushing like 230, 240. So I might have to recalibrate that. Might be some potentiometer in there that went a bit haywire with the heat. And I wish, I really wish you guys could feel this unit because everything is warm. The front panel is warm, the top cover, all of it is warm, the back side is warm. The heat sinks are, I'd say, about 60 degrees. The left channel runs a bit hotter for some reason. But this is fairly impressive. I mean, the rack handles are warm to the touch. If I can mean from the cold, I'd get very comfortable just holding on to this thing. It's very, very impressive. The whole thing is like a huge heat sink. And I thought these two fans here, which are 120 millimeter fans, almost brand new would be enough to keep my load cool but uh, yeah when it started to smell like hot resistor and uh, I could could barely touch the heat sinks bef without getting burned I had to use another fan and uh, throughout the whole test there was so much power being dissipated in here that if I put my hand back here there was a notably warm breeze coming out. The power meter has been saying about 750 watts has been be drawn from the grid all the time and I think 
I think the room temperature has gone up by at least a degree because it's actually reasonably warm in here unlike Finnish basements in the winter time normally are Wow this is impressive the whole top cover is uniformly warm it's a bit hotter right here over the driver boards but wow I can barely hold my hand here I, I almost just want to pull it off because it's so damn warm Whew. what a beast this thing is what a beast there we go perfectly adjusted meters just had to pop the top cover off and give uh, two adjustment potentiometers a bit of a um, spray with my deoxid and meters seem to work just fine off of that I think I'm gonna quit this video now I think I'm gonna make another one where I do a proper power test on it, a uh, well performance report where I put it through its paces at, and measure its distortion at uh, different power levels. So you've got that to look forward to. Until then, cheerio!